And joining us on the OK Tires Hotline this morning is uh, former Alabama quarterback John Parker Wilson. John Parker, good morning to you. Morning, fellas. How are you, buddy? Doing wonderful. How y'all doing? Doing good, man. Just uh, getting things heated up here on the uh, the sauna, the loveliest sauna off Skyland Boulevard you've ever been to this morning. Got uh, Martin. Oh, is, and, it, is, it, is it hot in there? It's a little bit warm, a little toasty. Oh, no. Yeah, it's it, not good. We, open up a window or something. Uh, well, we don't have a window either. <laughs> that would be great, uh, JP, but uh, we, y'all, need y'all can, come, we need you to come down here and build some construction. Yeah, we got a door with the window. That's about it. <laughs> but uh, we have no connection with the outside world once we're in the sauna. It's just straight sports and sweat. That's all we got. Oh, that's all right. A little sweat <laughs> more than never hurt anybody. That's right. Visiting with John Parker Wilson, former Alabama quarterback, NFL quarterback. Uh, John Parker, we were talking about underclassmen. Do you think it's even possible for – uh, again, 98 go into the draft. 36 don't get drafted. Is it possible to to allow some of these guys to come back and, and get that last year of eligibility if they get drafted? Do you think that's even a viable option? Do you talk about the guys that haven't been drafted? That have not been drafted. Well, you know, I, I don't think so. I think the way the thing's set up right now, you have to enter, and once you do, you're, you're ineligible after that. Is that correct? That's yeah, correct. it is. But do you think that they could look the NCAA could look at a rule change and allow them to come back? If you did that, you'd see every junior enter the draft, um, and it'd kind of be like baseball where, you know, those guys get drafted and they have a choice to go play or they have a choice to come back to school. So it kind of is, is more, it hurts the, the team more than the player because the team has, um, you know, risk with drafting a player, wasting that pick on them, and then the player saying, you know what, guys, I'm going to stay in college. I appreciate it. If they did that, the draft would go to like 20 rounds, and the late rounds would just be rolling the dice to see if the guy came out. Yeah, and that's why I was saying, JP, I was saying maybe you beef up the evaluation period, and then yeah. the, then the kids have to make a choice. In other words, right now, many of the juniors take their lead from agents, uh, Todd McShay and uh, Mel Kuyper, versus from the teams themselves. And maybe well, if, if you could bring that combine interview process up some, and then the kids actually make a decision after that but before draft. Yeah, well, well yeah, they're, they're getting their information from Todd, McShay, and Mel Kuyper because the NCAA doesn't let them talk to an agent. They don't give them the information. You know, they're still a student athlete, and they're having to make this lifetime decision on the, by themselves. They can't hire an agent until you commit to go to the draft. So I don't see how, how they can be expected to make a decision like that on their own, you know, just pretty much talking from their, their head coaches, all the information they're getting. The NFL's not helping them. The NCAA's not helping them because they're not allowed to. So you think that if they could talk to an agent earlier, that it would help? It would kind of help, uh, I guess, balance that, that act between overhype and what the r- reality is? Well, I don't know if it's an agent or if it's, you know, the NFL telling them, hey, you, you know, you're probably a fifth round to a seventh round grade right now. It might be a better idea to stay in. But, you know, every player thinks you're good enough coming out. Everybody thinks they're right. a good starter in the NFL. And that's just not the case. And, you know, sometimes it, sometimes, you know, you just need to go back to school and those guys end up getting drafted. And, you know, there'll be some guys that sign a free agent deal that didn't get drafted to the next team. But it's just, it's hard. It, it's really hard. And unless, you know, I would advise, unless you're a top, 15-20 pick, I think you should stay in school. 44 past the hour visiting with former Alabama quarterback John Parker Wilson. Had a great NFL career. Uh, John, John Parker, you you were a part of the Falcons. You were a part of Jacksonville. You, you were up in uh, Pittsburgh for a little while. So you've been able to see the league from a lot of different viewpoints, and you've been able to see a lot of really good arms, you know, with Matt Ryan, and, and you were with Blaine Gabbard, and then Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, in your opinion, uh who, who was the best quarterback in this draft? Oh, man, the best quarterback. You know, I, I think the way it's kind of become, it's like there's like two quarterbacks. And you look at the list, you know, it says like Blake Bortle and and the uh, the guy from Eastern Illinois and these pro-style guys. And then there's the Johnny Manziel, the Teddy Bridgewaters, the guy who, who kind of runs around more. Um, you know, I would say, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it, it was so. Are you a John, are, you, are you a Johnny Manziel fan? I am. I am. I think he. I think he does a lot of things well. I think he um, gets overshadowed by by the off the field stuff, and that's just kind of the way he is. I think he's a he's a much better quarterback than people give him credit for. 
um, just because of the, all the other, other height. I think he, he runs around really well. I think he throws the ball better than average. And I think, um, more than anything, probably, it seems like all his teammates got his back. I think all the time the guys are, are rallying around him and, and he, he kind of helped everybody else around the team and kind of bring them from, you know, where they're at. The house that Johnny built, they're calling that for a reason because he kind of put everybody on his back and took them to, to where they're at now. Yeah, and he's going to need that in some prayers if he's going to be in Cleveland because that's wow. where quarterbacks go to die. But uh, <laughs> watch out! One of the more disappointing uh, from from just a football perspective, of course, Johnny Menzel, and Michael Sam are taking the the headlines, and I believe everybody can talk at nauseum about that. But from a football perspective, people that really want to look at what football news broke, the fact that SEC quarterbacks went so low. You look at uh, Aaron Murray and 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 uh, uh, AJ McCarron as well as, as Zach Mettenberger. Let me ask you this: With you being in the league, was there a stigma around SEC quarterbacks, or did they have, did they have respect? Did you have to fight for that, or did they did they kind of uh, did they wane in comparison to some of the Big Twelve or Big Ten quarterbacks? You know, I think you got you kind of got to earn a little bit. I think the SEC is kind of you know this pro style. We're gonna we're gonna run the ball first, throw the ball second. I think you kind of one of those things you have to earn, um, as opposed to some of these guys that come in throwing the ball. 60 times a game, you know, guys in the SEC don't do that. It's just, it's not, it's not part of who we are. And, you know, Aaron Murray and AJ and Zach going as late as the king, you know, the other two guys are, had a little eat knee injury, but, you know, still most of the SEC quarterbacks got drafted. The only two that didn't were who? Connor Shaw and, and the kid out of Missouri. So, I mean, they're still going to the round. They still got a chance. And I'll tell you what, I think AJ's got the best situation out of anybody. On the team he's with and the, and the death charts they got right now, um, I, you know, I think he's got a chance to be the backup and come in and have a really good chance because he's, he's sitting pretty right now, I think. John Parker, do you think that he got drafted at his value or do you think that maybe some of the questions uh, lowered him in the draft or do you think that was actually his value according to the scouts? You know, I don't know about all the questions and all this stuff that comes out about, you know, all these reporters saying all this stuff. You know, I don't know. I don't think GMs talk to the reporters as much as the reporters lead everybody on to be on to believe. Um, you know, there's 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 all these different factors, and you know what? A lot of times, it's not based on how good you are, where you fall, or where you're at on the depth chart, or whether or not you're playing or not. It's kind of a numbers thing, especially with these teams right now. And you know, no quarterback got drafted in the third round. There's a couple in the fourth round, so you know, there wasn't a ton um, drafted. And that's just, I think, kind of where the chips fell. You know, these teams got all their needs, and, and they can kind of see how everybody's taking the quarterbacks. And, you know, there wasn't a, a huge run on quarterbacks early, and I think it just kind of trickled down. I don't think it had to do anything with the fact of where these guys were valued. I think it's just it's that's the nature of the draft. In some years, you know, you see five quarterbacks, seven quarterbacks go in the first couple of rounds, and that just wasn't the case this year. Yeah, JP, uh, kind of sticking in that same vein uh, with quarterbacks and speaking of running backs, I think what's happened is now you get your needs, and if there's a lot in that position and no one's drafted them early, those guys tend to just kind of fall. Um, but when you look at the running back position itself, um, do, do you think the the – league uh is going to is that trend gonna reverse itself or do you see the running back continuing the slide because last year it was a 37th pick this year i think the first running back was a 54th pick uh do do you see that trend continuing as running backs continue to fall in the draft yeah i do but while i'm thinking about it i want to get back to the running backs but this quarterback deal Mm -hmm. the reason i think quarterbacks aren't being taken Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it has to do with most teams only keep two quarterbacks now. Yeah, that's and right, that, the, the new rule. Right. They'll have the third guy be the practice squad guy. So you don't want to waste the pick early if you know the guy's going to be on practice squad. If the guy's going to be the third quarterback, he's going to be on the practice squad because these teams are only keeping two quarterbacks. So the new rule, that's just the way it is. You know, when you got these veteran guys um, – they, they they want the veterans to be the backup. They want the young guys to learn on the practice squad and work their way up. I think it's a great model. Um, Learning-wise, it sucks being the third quarterback like I was, and then they start this new rule. Um, but that's just the way it is, and I think that has a lot to do with it, this new rule. It really factors in a bunch, a lot more than people think. I think it had a lot more effect than you know they, they saw instituting it. 
with the running back, I think, you know, that's just the way the, the life expectancy of a running back is three or four years. Um, you know, it's just they can play running back by committee and get away with it nowadays. Yeah. And I think they're not going to waste picks early on. They'd rather get a defensive tackle that plays for 10 years rather than running back that plays for four. Is it is it also I know length uh, or age wise in terms of career length? Do, do you also think it's because guys are not having to do everything? In other words, this guy, running back comes from like a Trey Mason. Trey Mason yeah. never had to block, never had to catch the ball, and so they know that if they draft Trey Mason, they got to also now get a running back <laughs> that can catch him even even block. And so the running back by committee, not just age wise in terms of career. But also in what skill set they bring in is that why Trent Richardson was such a value because he could do all three. Yeah, you want a guy that can play all three down. You don't want to. You don't want to have a guy to be on the first on the field the first two downs and then you know the little scat back comes on third down to catch the ball. Um, you know you're really limiting yourself. And you know like we said, we always said the more you can do, the better. If you can play running back and play a slot. Um, you got a better chance to hang around. One of my uh, really good friends, Atlanta, a guy named Jason Snelling. Not many people have probably heard him because he wasn't a star running back, but the guy's been playing for like nine years as a running back because he can play on first down, because he catches the ball, because he's a hell of a blocker. He knows every position. He plays fullback when they need it to. He's not just a guy that comes in there and pounds it on first down. He's a guy that does it all over the field, all the time, that plays special teams, and those are the guys that stay around not just the big bruisers like Michael Turner who end up phasing out because he can only put on first and second down. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to – I uh, can't believe we actually brought the, the term fullback while we were talking about the draft. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, 53 <laughs> past the hour visit with John Parker Wilson here on Tide 99.1. Uh, John Parker, I got on a soapbox last week about uh, uh, teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars who needed a quarterback. Uh, of course, you know, if you need one, you got to go get one. But I don't necessarily think that that's the best thing for franchises. How do you sit on 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 your draft as far as what you would do if you're the GM? Uh, do you think that you're smart going out and getting that quarterback and not having really any tools around him versus kind of building interiorly and then going and waiting for that big Andrew Luck type guy to come out? See, I I, I get really confused because if I'm the GM, you know I, I'm gonna. And a guy like Andrew Luck comes out or Eli Manning or you get some stud from the draft, I, you know, I'm going to spend everything I got to go get him the first pick. Andrew Luck, I mean, he's, he's, you know, you can see what he's doing now. That's the kind of guy you want. You know, like the Jaguars spending the second round pick, I think if they play it right, it could work out. Whereas he sits for a couple of years, Chad Henney's a great quarterback. He can get it done. If he can sit there and learn and be groomed and, play when he's ready, that would be great. But if not, if if they want him to come into play, I think it's be bad. Is that kind of what happened to Blaine? Um, get forced into a bad situation and then have have expectations so high that you can't ever meet because you are top ten pick, especially this guy being the set what is he the third right. pick? Yeah. So I think if if he's not gonna play and he's gonna sit, that's great. I, I think there's people lose value in quarterbacks like Matt Schaub who have done it, who have proven themselves, who've been playing, who, you know, they get into a bad situation, but they're still a good quarterback. Now he's going to go to Oakland and probably do great. But I think people, these GMs put such a value in the draft, whereas, you know, the whole thing with the salary cap deal and all the, all the, all the money going from the draft to these players is putting more value in guys that have done it for two or three years, three or four years. And that's, I think the draft is still overvalued a little bit in the sense that you got guys doing it who have kind of getting pushed aside. That's former Alabama quarterback, NFL quarterback John Parker Wilson joining us.